Hi, this is Ryan with Iron Planet Hobbies, and in this video, I'm going to show you why the Digikai's DR5013 really is the ultimate reverse loop module. We will also be covering some of the features and settings that are available. Alright, to get started, the first thing you will want to do is make sure that your firmware is up to date. At the time of this video, 1.0.2 is the current firmware version, and you can find those instructions. They are fairly straightforward in the manual as far as plugging in the device and getting that updated. Uh, some of the local net features uh, that you may want to pay attention to, uh, we do have local net feedback monitoring, and also number two, slow module timing. What that's used for is older local net devices um, that may be slowing down the local net a little bit. This will allow the 5013 to uh, make sure that the data messages get transmitted. Um, you can also set up your Railcom, and that's a whole nother subject, so I won't go into detail on setting up the Railcom. And you can find all of these settings inside the PC app. And we will jump on down here and look at some of these. Uh, you can go through each one of these and set these to your liking. Uh, setting up the module address, again, is fairly straightforward in the PC app. And you can actually go ahead and download the PC app and it will run in demo mode. And that way you can kind of get an idea of what all the settings are, even if you do not have the DR5013 yet. So, um, again, I will not go through all of these settings. Um, they are found in other videos as well. Uh, module properties. Uh, basically what you've got here, uh, again, is a lot of your Railcom, um, quality of service, and things like that. What quality of service does, just for those that don't know, uh, this measures how well your DCC signal is traveling between the decoder and the command station. Uh, if you have a quality of 0%, then all the commands have arrived. And the larger the percent that goes up means you've got something, uh, such as it mentions here, dirty track, or you have bad connections in the wiring, and that would be something that you would want to look at. Uh, DR scripting is basically just setting up uh, scripting to control processes. It's just a language to automate things that on the layout. And here we'll start talking about some of the sensor tracks and what makes this the ultimate reverse loop module. All right, to get started here, uh, a typical reverse loop module will sense a short circuit on the layout. Uh, similar to like a frog juicer on a turnout or a just a typical reverse module. So what makes this different is the layout, the locomotives, the electronics will never see that short circuit. Therefore, it will protect them, um, give them longer life because the 5013 is going to adjust the polarity before the locomotive enters the block. And so what I mean by that is we will use this as an example right here. If you have a locomotive coming into this reverse loop, this track is a separate block. When the locomotive hits this block here, it is going to trigger an occupied sensor Therefore, the 5013 will see that this block has a locomotive entering it and will go ahead and reverse the polarity in the loop. So the polarity is matched based upon the locomotive entering this direction before it actually hits the reversing section, this part up here on the blue. So when the locomotive travels on around the loop, and when it comes back and it hits this sensor section right here, the whole loop's polarity is going to reverse again 
based upon the exit going to the left so therefore it is changed before it reaches the exit on the turnout and therefore the layout again never sees a short circuit. This can also be used for turnout control. So again when the locomotive enters the loop if you've got the turnout aligned to the diverging as it travels the loop when it reaches the sensor right here this is sensor number two the turnout will automatically be aligned for the straight path before the train reaches it. So I hope that makes sense on why there are four separate sensing sections here and these are also detection sec sections. So if you are using Railcom you can get Railcom information on all four of these plus the loop. If the locomotive is coming in this way again this this block here is going to set the polarity upon exit this block right here would set the polarity again that's why there are four separate sections here for the sensing tracks uh, there are multiple ways uh, that can be set up and connected based upon what type of equipment you're using uh, the global detector will just give your railcom information and feedback information um, on the loop and here you have some different uh, connection types um, in this example here you just have your double gaps right here and this is a very simple setup uh, this will work with any DCC system um, it will reverse the loop uh, this is not with short circuit free this is an actual short circuit detection and so it will just control the loop again uh, based upon any short circuit between this one and this one. And as you can see here in this example, uh, right here, none of the sensor tracks are being used. And this is the same example, except we do have a local net connection here. Uh, with the local net connection, we can now get railcom feedback, send out short circuit messages, and anything that's capable of being reported on the local net. And this example here, this is the, the best way to use all the features of the 5013 uh, to be able to use those railcom messages and also for controlling the entire loop, including uh, automatic turnout control. So that way, if you are using automation software, the train will enter the loop however you have that set and you will not have to change it because this will throw the turnout back automatically. Um, you will still need another device such as the 4018 or uh, 4024 if you're using servos to throw a turnout or any other type of uh, turnout module to automate that process. Um, another example here is the short circuit free without using uh, the extra sensor tracks. So if you do not have another device for detection, then you can set that up just using the sensor one, sensor two, and the locomotive being in the loop, this will automatically adjust it as well. So that way you still have short circuit free without the other entrances. And then this is the way to set it up if you are not, if you have a system that does not use LocoNet. In this example, it's using the S88N, but this could also be used with ExpressNet or other uh, systems. And it's basically the same setup before, uh, except that we are still not using this and this block here. It's just using these. And uh, as you can see how the track is connected here and it comes in through the common on the 4088 and this will still allow the feedback that you're looking for plus you will be able to get uh, your reverse loop to function and still be able to get that turnout control that you're looking for and this is just a close-up example of how those are set 
from your feedback module right here. If you're using uh, Marklin 3 rail track and your feedback modules are using GND, then this is the example you would want to use here. If you are using uh, lens boosters, you actually have a connection here that can report a short circuit onto uh, the ExpressNet. And so these are just a couple of the um, quick examples of how this works and some of the settings you can go through. It would take a uh, really long video to go through every single possible uh, setup and connection. But um, hopefully, just by understanding how these sensors here work, um, in reading through the manual you can kind of grasp how that works and uh, what it does and that's why there are four separate sensor blocks on uh, on the loop including the loop so that technically that would make five but um, then this also works great for setting up your signaling um, for entering the loop or exiting the loop and then you do have in the PC software, the turnout control settings to where you can set up for none, you can set up for sensor, um, and then you can also set up for sense direction. So there are several different ways that turnout can be controlled um, based upon your application. Um, if there's more than one locomotive in the loop or accessing it, if you have a really long loop and could have multiple trains in there at the same time, really have a lot of options on setting that up. Um, if you have any comments, questions, uh, please leave those below. I'll do my best to answer those since I could not cover everything in this video. I didn't want it to get too long. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more videos.